So we have how many persons on the call? I, Emmanuel, Edith, um, Stephen, Masichuku, Vice Chair for Pana members. I'm all right. I'm trying to look for a jam for us. I have my jams on my phone and my laptop. Let's see. Should we have that? Okay, we have, okay, I'm starting exactly with 510. Please let's shout to our members to join. Can you hear the music? We can't, we can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, let me see. You can't play the music on your phone while you are, uh, you are active on, on the Zoom. So maybe you need an external um, device. Oh, okay. Be, yeah, like so that's how it works. Yeah, okay. that's it. Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar again. Uh, we have our speaker on the call already, Mr. Oli Emi Adioshu. Yeah, welcome, sir, from a fellow YPB. I don't know if you are a YPB, but from a, a YPB alumnus. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Good to see you once again. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. 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 
So we'll be starting for far. So is a friend of the house, okay? YPB, if you are into CN, I mean, is a resource person. So let me just start by reading our prof uh, Mr. Oliemi's profile. So Mr. Oliemi Adiosu is a top performing, accomplished, and skilled human resource executive and researcher with over 16 years of experience across high profile industries, including fintech, power, oil and gas, telecommunications, broadcasting, real estate, advertising, academia, consulting, and volunteer work. He offers professional expertise and a diverse range of skills within training and development, organizational strategy development, business partnership, change management, employee relationship management, and administrative expert HR role. Is a member of Chartered Institute of Personnel Management, also a member of the Governing Council of the Institute. Is a senior professional human resource international. Is a global practitioner human resources. Is a PhD candidate, economics department of University of Lagos, currently ongoing. Is an E. Obtained an MBA from the Obafemi Awolo University, Ilefe. He also has an MSc Economics University of Lagos. He has his bachelor's in Economics University of Illinois, Nigeria. Yay, for my mama mater. Okay, he's currently the group head Accelerate Origins. He previously had employee relations, EKJ Electricity Electric. He also had um yeah, it was previously the head of Human Resources and Administration, Korea Plus Limited. It was also the people manager, Russell Smith Integrated Oil Services. It was also the Human Resources Technology, as well as the Human Resources Manager for Resources Technology Distribution Limited, Shared Services Field Co. Limited, Emotions Advertising, he has a previous experience in consulting and HR experience at Globalcom, a major technology firm, telecommunications firm. He's also a member of Toastmaster International and have attained the highest award of distinguished Toastmasters. He has published 35 papers in reputable journals. Ladies and gentlemen, are we excited to learn from our one and only Mr. Oluyemi Adiosu, as they walk us through today's webinar on CV and um, AC interviews. Please, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. On Mr. Adiosu, a round of applause. You, you. you have the floor. So yes, yeah, so from um, 5 so p.m. to 6 15, 6 to 6 o'clock, you have the floor, after which we are going to take the question and answer session from 6 p.m. So the floor is yours. I will be going to you um, from the I right. I need the host right. No. Uh, no, no, I, think I think I have everything I need. Oh, amazing. So you have the floor. All right. Thank you so much, um, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Please, to confirm that we are all active humans, do me a favor, just type in how you feel in one word in the chat box. Mm -hmm. I see 17 people on this call. I expect 16 responses. I'm the 17 person. So I want to make sure that nobody is ghosting. I need you guys to appreciate the fact that a lot of investment has gone into putting this program together and we should get maximum value for our time. So I'll be brief and direct, but there's a price you need to pay and it is called attention, okay? Just pretend that you paid 100,000 Naira for this one hour session. I will repeat that emphatically. Assume you paid 100,000 Naira for this session. So without adding, let's move forward. So briefly, I'll be talking about CV writing, interview skills and LinkedIn optimization within the time allotted. So I may be very fast, but I trust you can follow me, all right? So there are two objects showing on the screen right now. What comes to your mind? And you can write as many words or phrases as possible. Type them in quick succession. 
Again, this will be a very interactive class, okay? Quickly, 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 what comes to your mind? Be expressive, be creative, think outside the box, okay? See beyond the regular, what comes to your mind? Let me quickly check if anybody is rising fast and swiftly to the location. Again, I will expect at least 15 responses to this. All right, sometimes I like having the power of admin. What do I do? I take out participants who are not participating because a participant must participate. Okay, I've seen like three responses now and the three responses is from two people. Okay, all right, fantastic. When I get eight responses, we'll move on. We'll move on quickly. So let's see. Fastest finger, speed, speed, agility is required. Fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone who is responding and uh, helping us make progress. Fantastic. All right. So someone here says he can see innovation. That's beautiful. Very perfect. Innovation. Someone here says they can see two brands. That's normal. Anybody will see two brands. Somebody said they can see brand logo. That is normal. Anybody will see brand logo, okay? Somebody else sees, sees logos, recent and old. That is normal. Anybody will see it. What are you bringing to the marketplace? Are you bringing the normal or you are bringing something extra, something different, something special, something spectacular? These two things you are saying stand for something. It stands for innovation stands for what? For value. Stands for what? Value. Why do some people go for Apple products today, even though they cost a lot? Because there is a value or a premium placed on it. How many people today, how many organizations today will place what? A premium on your services. The only reason why anybody will place a premium on your services is if and only if they see that you offer value, okay? When you are approaching the labor market, don't come from the place of sympathy. Don't come from the place of empathy. Don't approach anyone and say, please help me. No, 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 no. These products I'm showing you, Apple is not in the market and telling you that, please have mercy on me, buy me. In fact, you can be proud. And say, if you are broke, please don't come to my store. If you are not rich, please walk down the road. Are you that good? Are you that competent? Okay, that's by way of uh, introduction and opening remarks. I hope you're already picking something. I hope you are writing down, you are taking notes. This is not just another session. This is very important. I saw this newspaper article some few, I think one or two years ago, and I was perplexed. And the title, which I'm showing you right now, is that Nigeria faces talent crisis. Nigeria faces talent crisis. And who made this assertion? World Economic Forum. And it dawned on me that, okay, there is a, they did not say Nigeria is facing employment crisis. They did not say Nigeria is facing people crisis. They did not say Nigeria is facing crisis with people looking for jobs. It don't dawn me that there's a difference between what? Talent and labor. I'm sure today, if I ask you that, how many people do you know looking for jobs? Maybe you can list 50 people, 100 people, 200 people. If I tweak the question, how many talented people do you know looking for jobs? Think about it deeply. Then let me flip the question. Are you talented? Are you labor or talent? Are you labor or talent? Now, if you are talent, what will happen in the real sense of it over time is that jobs will be looking for you. If you are labor, you will be looking for jobs. For those of us that follow football somewhat, you will realize that there are footballers and there are footballers. Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, even though they are footballers, they can dictate the terms and conditions relative to the average other player. Why? They are what? A talent. 
Now, let's move to the next major thing. So I've made two key points today. One on value, the other one on talent. I hope you are taking notes. All right, I may not finish my slide. I will stop when the time ends, but what matters is the value you get. Okay, now, there are certain things that is very important as we approach the labor market, either immediately or we have even begin to en encounter, engage, in yes, interface with the labor market, or as we may approach them in the next one or two years. And I've written them now. Okay, and you can see them right now. Alignment, goal setting, awareness, recognition, interrelationships, context, documentation. These are very key. And I'll speak about some of them in no particular way. I read a book many years ago, all right? The book is titled, Doing Business at the Speed of, 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 of Light. Doing Business at the Speed of Light. It was written by Bill Gates. And in that book, I read that the purpose of education, irrespective of the course of study, is to increase our capacity to think, to analyze, and to profile solutions. Three things. Let me see if you got it. What are the three key purpose of study or education? Type it in the chat box. What are the three key purpose of education, irrespective of the course of study, according to Bill Gates in his book, Doing Business at the Speed of Life? Let me see if anybody is following me. Again, I hope I have participants on this course. If you are a participant, you will participate. A participant is not passive. Passive people get suboptimal results. You need to be engaged to move to the world to the next level. Let me recap three things. One, you get educated to increase our capacity to think. You see that I'm pointing out my head, think. Two, analyze. So it's not just about getting information. You need to process it, analyze it. And thirdly, which is also critical and important, profile solution. Now, I met a lady some few years ago, and I came up with this concept. Okay, and the lady was trying to, you know, sell sympathy and empathy to me, sentiments, for saying, "Oh, sir, please, can you mentor me, help me? I don't have any job." I said, "How come? What's the problem? Why are you not getting?" opportunity to you know, secure a job. She said, and uh, she thinks in her opinion that she doesn't have any work experience. I was startled and I looked at her and I said to her, and I'm also saying to you, I have never met anybody in my entire life. Maybe I've not met enough people. I know some of you, you savvy people well, but it's okay. I'm talking about my own network, okay? I have never met anybody in my life who doesn't have work experience. I have only met people who didn't recognize or identify the experience as work experience. Whose, whose fault is that? Guess who? That's a lack of awareness. That's a lack of what? Recognition. And that's a problem. That's, a, that's not being able to appreciate context. So back to my story. I asked this lady that, okay, just tell me a little about yourself. So she told me that her father was a teacher. I think he was teaching in a primary school at that time. Said her mother was a pet trader. And I asked, how long has your mother been a trader? I said, oh, in fact, all of my life. I said, does she still trade? She said, yes. And then I asked, do you occasionally, at times, sometimes, sit with your mom at her shop? She said, yes, that all through her secondary school, she typically would leave closing school and go to her mom's shop where they would all be till like seven when they would now go home. Then when she secured admission to the university, anytime they were on vacation, including strike, she was literally permanently at this shop with her mom. I said, wow, and you don't have the experience. Because of time, let me show you some of the things I was able to put together. Okay, with her. Just by what? Staying with her mom in her shop. Now, 
this list is not exhaustive. I'm sure you guys may be able to even add more. But by engaging with her, I was able to discover that she had some sales experience. She had resilience. You know, it's not easy to be selling markets and people are negotiating and are trying to convince them. Or maybe they want a particular product and you don't have it and are trying to get them to buy another one. You must have some form of organizational skills. I hope you know that products in a retail store are not just arranged randomly. That's organization. You need to put sweets at a certain place where children can see it, their visibility, so that they can persuade their parents to buy. You need to be able to communicate. You need to be able to manage people. Customer service, very, very important. You must be able to negotiate. You must have interpersonal skills, otherwise you won't have repeat customers. You must have pay attention to what details. Okay, you have inventory management because you have different stocks and products. Okay, you that's retail management when you are managing different merchandise. Trust me, you must be able to do debt management. You know how your neighbor will say, "Ah, mommy, so so and so, I don't have change. Let me pick it up on my way back." We begin to take Mary out of this Zoom meeting. Okay. If she comes on again, please take Mary out of the meeting. Thank you. Debt management. You must, I, I hope you know that organizations today built entirely on debt management or debt recovery. There are department units. You must have persuasive skills. You must be able to do procurement. Don't forget that everything in the store, they too buy it from other, um, either wholesalers or vendors or suppliers. Today, there's a department called procurement. Merchandising and branding, how you position the product, quality assurance, bookkeeping, accounts. They keep records, how many have they sold, what is left, what is the profit, what's the margin. You know, they even have one or two assistants supporting their mom, talent management, HR, okay? Growth management, how do we grow the business? She even was able to do some data analysis then they typically have to make decision, decision making, because there are instances where you just have so much money and you have options of which products to buy and you need to make a call. And I ask her, uh, really, let's think about it. And I'm also asking you guys, this lady in question, does he have, she have work experience? Two, so does she have skills? I said, let me shock you. In this, your mom's business, you were interfacing with global, emphasis on global, global brands like Unilever, Procto and Gamble, Cadbury, Cowbell, PZ, Chi, Nestle, Flower Mills, Dangote, Coca-Cola, 7-Up, Nigerian Buies, and a host of other world-class and national organizations. In fact, Many of them had either, you know, their sales van and their sales team come to our mom's shop to interface with her. I said, look at the exposure you have had to a plethora of what? Multiple organizations. Now, somebody may say, okay, maybe my mom doesn't have a store. I don't have anything. I said, even when you were in school, Ceteris Paribus, I read economics. That means all things being equal. You must have picked valuable skills. For example, communication, goal setting, problem solving, and so on and so forth. In fact, you know, when we went to school, some people, instead of asking that, what is your course? They will say, what is your discipline? Instead of saying, what is your course? They will say, what is your discipline? You know, course of study is a discipline because any course you study will force you to be disciplined. If you are not disciplined, you, can, you won't even graduate. Even if you got a pass, there is a minimum level of discipline required to get a pass, a higher level of discipline required to get a third class, a two to two first class. But I say if you are completely indisciplined, you will drop out of school. And I'm not talking about drop out like the youth. I mean drop out due to the fact that you could not muster enough um, time to read and pass your exam. I said, all things being equal, depending on the kind of person you are, you'll have had an opportunity to lead. Were you a class chef or a class governor? From year one to year four or year five, 
and they didn't impeach him. Do you know the number of lecturers you are managing every semester and every session? When your co fellow students move from under level to 200 level, you are able to blend the direct entry level students with the, without rank off. You don't know what that means? If you are a spirit jinjim, like Oluwati Mlenyi, did you make ESCO? Were you the sister leader or the president of the club? Were you an usher? Were you a choir director? Okay, let me just use an example here. I remember sharing with somebody during an interview tip, and I'm saying this early in case you don't get time to get there. You know, I told you earlier that there's interrelatedness, there's connectedness, and there's context. Imagine you are going for a sales interview and you are trying to sell yourself. And you tell them that when I was a fellowship of the Covenant Nation Campus Fellowship, when I became president, we were 552 members. By the time I was handing over one year later, the fellowship had grown by the grace of God to 922. If you hire me, these same growth principles, I'll be able to increase your market base or your clientele by over 50%. It may look unrelated, but it's a concept. If you can grow a fellowship, you can grow a customer base. Interconnectedness. People, what am I saying in essence? Open your mind. Open your eyes. You are too endowed. Are you recognizing your endowment? You are talented. Do you know it? If you are really, really, you know, on ground, maybe you are even in SUG, um, your departmental president or ESCO, your faculty, okay? Maybe you are in clubs like JCI, Rotaract, ISEC. If you are not in any of these, something must be wrong with you. Fellowship, you don't find you there. Uh, politics, you don't find you there. Uh, social club, you don't find you. Where you can't do? Check, check. Where you can't do? We need to check your matric number. Then even things like vocational trainings. I know people, people things like barbering, sewing, baking. Sometimes we, I don't know why some of us in Nigeria, we look condescendingly at some of those skills, like maybe you can play here, you, you can cook. Do you know how much chefs make? Cooking is not ordinary, especially if you can really cook. Anything you can do really well, no more. If it doesn't fetch you money here, it will fetch you money in Canada. Note that down. Apprenticeship, maybe you did mechanic or tailoring or something. So there must be something that you are good at. Okay, look for what you are good at and try your system. In the interest of time, I make progress. Okay, now World Economic Forum came up with some critical skills that by 2025, which is literally in three years time, will be predominant. Some of them are already predominant even as of today. One, analytical thinking and innovation. Thinking and innovation, very important one. Two, Active learning and learning strategies. You know, when people say I'm a learner for life, some of us, when we left University of Kentucky, we say, oh, well, I'll never read another book. Or more, your work will start. Because if you are not an active learner, it will be difficult to break through in the career world. Because it means you will not be abreast of contemporary developments in your occupation. You won't be at the frontier. You won't be at the, at, at, at the you know, burning edge. Three, complex problem solving. Four, critical thinking and analysis. Five, creativity, originality, and initiative. Six, leadership and social influence. You can't just be me, me, myself, and I. Technology use, monitoring, and control. Technology design and programming. Look at this, very important. Resilience, stress tolerance, and flexibility. Not that, oh, any small software, you don't give up. This wala is too much. The good thing, by being in Nigeria, resilience is built into our system. We are struggling right now with internet, but with resilience, we are here. Some of us, we don't have light right now. It's with resilience that you have electricity on your mobile device or your laptop to listen to this call. Little wonder when Nigerians go to Europe, they naturally flourish. Is because resilience has been built into them by their virtue of being in Nigeria. Stress tolerance, flexibility. Flexibility is, yes, you may want to do something in a certain way, but when you get information data, you are flexible enough to change your approach. 
you are not you are not rigid. Some people are so knowledgeable that they become rigid. No, you must be flexible, especially when information or data available to you suggests alternative ways of getting things done. Lastly, but not the least, reasoning, problem solving, and ideation. Reasoning, problem solving, and ideation. Okay, I want to touch quite a number of things in my limited time. So what's a CV? Okay, is a tool that communicates what you can offer to a prospective employer. It is to enable you to communicate your work skills effectively. You need to understand what the work class employer needs from a work class employee. Okay, I typically tell people that you should not have the intention of working for a blue chip organization if you are not a blue chip individual. You are either an hot cake or you'll be what? Unwanted. There are no sentiments out there. Look, if people are ignoring you, if people are not paying sufficient attention to you, if people can jump over your profile, it means you are operating in the realm of average or mediocrity. When you are in the exceptional plane, it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or an atheist. You know, they say, CS demand diligence in this business, okay? They will stand before kings and not marry, okay? Yeah, your CV can be one page, okay? I'll show you two people whose CV is one page, as busy as their life has been. This is uh, Marisa Neya, you can see her experience. That's at the time of this CV, she was president and CEO of Yahoo, formerly vice president of location and local service at Gogo. She was also once product manager and technical UI lead at Google. She started her career at Google as a project product engineer. She put something to show a day in her life, you can see. She has a life philosophy. The most proud of, in other words, her accomplishment. Then look at her strengths, okay? Then she has language skills. And she wrote it there, English, Spanish, and German. Look at her education. MS in computer science, BSc in symbolic system at Stanford University. Just one page. Look at our cousin who just bought a, what do we call it, Twitter. Look, look at his CV as at the time I obtained this. Okay, Chairman Solar City. You can easily add Chairman of Twitter to, to this collection. He was also former CEO and product architect at Telsa Motors, and so on and so forth. Look at his education. Bachelor of Science in Economics, Wharton School. Okay, he also has a Bachelor of Science in Physics. Imagine, so he has two degrees. Look at his skills and competencies. Listen to this, it will enlighten and broaden your mind. Okay, Elon Musk can think through first principles. I wish somebody understand what first principles is, especially if you did a course like physics or chemistry. Thinking through first principles, micromanaging, goal oriented future focused, critical thinking, resilience, verbal and written communication, leadership, creativity, time management. Look at some of his achievements written here. Look at his languages. He speaks English and Afrikaans. Afrikaans is a language predominant in South Africa. Okay, look at his interest, physics, sustainability, philanthropy, extraterrestrial life, alternative energy sources, space engineering, reading and video games. One page, I just showed you that to show that your CV need not be two, three, four, twenty. 20, is not the length, is the importance, okay? So there are different types of CV, you know, can be chronological, maybe your first internship, then your second internship and your third internship, okay? It can also be functional. Okay, all right. So I hope, I expect that as, as I'm doing this interaction, you're also looking at the screen, use it, putting your eyes on the screen because you also see some things I'm not mentioning because of time. Okay, so what are some of the things that should be in your CV? From the two, three CVs we've seen so far, you already know some things here, personal details. But um, because of the world we are in, be discreet. So I would suggest that, for example, don't say, I live at number 21, Bushiri Street, Lagos Island. You can just say, you live at Lagos Island. It's enough. 
you don't need to put your your street no, name and number. And if you put your street, don't put the number so that you are safe in case your CV ends up with some people with um, unhealthy and um, what you call it intentions. What's your career objective? Of course, your education. Do you have any work experience? And I've showed you how to get work experience. So I hope by listening to me today so far, some of you are already thinking of things that can and should feature on your CV. Okay. If you have any professional qualifications, those those kind of things um, should, should be there. Okay. Now, let me say this quickly, and which may tie to the next phase of our conversation. Again, I apologize if I appear to be operating at a fast pace. This is the 21st century. I have so much to pour into you in so little time, and I'm determined to do it. All right. Now, all organizations, irrespective of whether it's a one-man business, a multinational, even a government agency, um, a faith-based organization, there are like three or four things, directly and indirectly. They are looking for how to get income. In other words, make money. So there are different terms depending on the concept. If one or two accountants on the line, they will appreciate this better. Maybe they have a new income sales. Next, there is no amount of money you make. If you are not careful, you can spend more than it. So for example, now, if I give Timile 5,000 naira, I'm sure in less than one hour, she will have finished spending it. Let me now vex. Ah, Timile, you have finished spending the 5,000. Let me give her 50,000 naira. In 30 minutes, Timile will still finish spending the 50,000 naira. Turn it to 5 million naira. Maybe she'll just buy a car. The money will still not even be enough for the car she will go and choose. Do you get the logic? So as important as making money is, it's also important to be able to reduce or eliminate costs. So there's the side of earning money, and there's also the side of preserving money, protecting money. Three, quality. Very critical and very interesting. Lastly, time. When I say time, can you do things faster? Can you make it more, more accessible? All right, so that we can add more value to the people um, we, are, we, are, we are dealing with. Okay, now, why did I give you all these things? For one reason, or two or more. When you are in an interview and they say, please tell us about yourself. That question, which typically is a very common question, almost all interviewers will ask, and typically it's the first question they ask. Sometimes it can be the only question because what you say, there may be no need for further questions or out of politeness, they may ask you two, three further questions and they will wrap it up. As you are telling the panel or the interviewer or the recruiter about yourself, make sure that that story, that script, that narrative shows how you can make money, shows how you can reduce or uh, limit cost, shows how you can improve or sustain quality, shows how you can use your time. So you are not just saying things like, my name is Ole Emi I'm from the autonomous community of Umaya West, local government. Who that story here? I gave you an example. On campus, I was president of a fellowship, met it at 420, increased it to 890. What are you showing? I can grow your organization. Look at what you do, where you have excelled. So there are typically about two or more, but I'll speak about two important types. There are more, but let me speak about two important types of interviews. One is the competency-based interview. The other is the situational-based interview. Most people prefer, to a large extent, a combination of these two types. Now, what's competency-based interview? I will focus on the core skills required to excel on the job. Let me give you an example. Assuming we are interviewing Timileni, Timlay, I hope you are good. You know, I can see you, so you, you, you are a go-to person, don't mind me. So imagine we're interviewing Timlay for the post of personal assistant. What are the competencies required to be a personal assistant? Now, let me test our capacity to think quickly. Drop it in the chat box. Let me see, I just need like five, quickly. In your own opinion, if you were to hire lower Timlay, or maybe not hire, but consider lower Timlay as your personal assistant, what are the five skills or competencies you will be looking out for? 
quickly. You can type them one after the other. Thank you so much. On your lower, chop knuckle, chop knuckle. All right. You'll be looking for a PA that has attention to details. I need four more competencies quickly. I need four more competencies quickly. What you don't try to don't go and go below. I want what you will want. Okay. All right. Um, Sulaiman Uluakade says, I need someone who can follow instruction. That's very important. Follow instruction. In other words, do this, get it done. Yes. Orelu again says, organizational skills. Last three. Edit says, ability to organize things. Then I'll pick the last point here. Matifa says, excellent communication skills. Fantastic. Now, if I am Olua Timlehi and they say, Olua Timlehi, please, can you tell us about yourself? As I'm telling you the story of maybe my educational journey, my career journey, I must make sure that all these skills that I stylishly and intentionally show you that I am organized, that I pay attention to details, that I can follow instructions. Even from the first question, tell us about yourself. For example, maybe when you are on campus, and in fellowship, you are protocol officer to the president. You know, protocol officer may not be too far from PA. You are carrying out instructions from the president. You, can you see interrelatedness now? I never thought about this example before, that being a protocol, for example, in a fellowship can be connected to being a PA in the real world space. Are we together? Now, when it comes to situ um, situational based interview, we want to look at how you will react or behave. All things being equal. So typically, we will ask questions that simulate work, real life work scenario. So, for example, you can ask a, a customer comes to the company to, to return a product that he purchased, and the product looks at you and says you are stupid. How would you react? That's situational. Or a, a customer comes to the organization and there's a queue about 50 people. Then a boy calls the queue and offers to give you 5,000 naira tea. How will you react? That's situational. Okay, we want to see what you will do in those kinds of things. And typically, we are looking at ethics, we are looking at innovation, we are looking at creativity. Okay, while for competency based, we are looking at skills and, and, and knowledge. Um, okay, so because of time, um, I'll skip some things. I may, I may come back to them if, if time permits, but you need to prepare for, for interview. You need to research about the organization. Sometimes I like using the example of relationship. So let's say a young man who is working likes a young woman and you want to invite her for a movie. Either you go through a profile on Facebook or social media to get a sense of the kind of movie she likes, or you will ask her, what kind of movie do you like? Do you like horror film? Do you like action film? Do you like comedy? Do you like romance? If, for example, she, she likes romance and you take her to watch horror film, I hope you know, say, your money as Miss Road. You also need to read, study. If it's a large organization, you may even go to a branch after work or something and talk to one or two staff. Oh, what do you guys do? How do you guys do? I have an interview with your organization. Can you give me some tips? Also dress appropriately. I know we do a lot of online interviews today. That an interview is online does not mean you should look shabby and unprofessional. Please, except maybe you are applying for a role in uh, maybe um, entertainment. Even as at that, at certain level, you need to be as professional as possible. Okay, all right. So I've already spoken about some of these things. Um, let me quickly go to um, LinkedIn um, optimization. If time permits, I will come back to look at five questions that is typically asked in an interview and possible ways to respond to it. But I need to ensure that I cover my bit. All right. When I have five minutes to go, um, please be gracious enough to let me know so that I will know how to use my outstanding five minutes. And I hope I don't have five minutes already. OK, I'm still here. Now, you see, your LinkedIn, technically, is the same thing as your CV. I'm using it loosely now. You know, your CV is something like a document. It can be hard copy, a word copy, a PDF that shows the details of your work, 
and experience. Now, as I've been talking to you guys since about around 5 p.m., it's not impossible that any of you, if you want, maybe I even say, who is this only Emma Adelson? Or when they share the flyer with you guys, you might have wondered that, who is this only Emma Adelson? Do I even want to go for this webinar? Okay, what do you do? Of course, they wrote where I work currently on the flyer, but that's just a one-liner. You can just go online and search. And that's a challenge I'd like to give to you right now. If I go online right now and type Elizabeth Inya on Google, what will I see? Now, yes, we are talking about LinkedIn, but I'm extending it to internet generally. If I put your name on any search engine, typically Google or Google, what will come out? I'll give you a challenge. Maybe during this call or after this call, just type my name in Google and see what comes to you. I hope that when I Google your name, one, I hope I will find you. I hope I find you. Two, when I find you, I hope I will like what I will see. I hope what I will see will reflect your professionalism, will reflect your capability, will reflect your competence. I hope I won't see you abusing different political parties, except you're a political analyst by career. Do you understand where I'm coming from? If you go and Google for my name, you will know that, okay, you can invite me for this kind of talk I'm holding here today. Now, LinkedIn, I may not ask you for your CV. I'll just check you out on LinkedIn. And that is why you need to pay attention to, to your LinkedIn. Your LinkedIn should be able to show your visibility and your credibility. Now, a few things to optimize. Let me just say that I know people and I'm aware of people who collect money from people to help them optimize their ringing. I don't really think you need to pay. You can do it yourself. But if you are laid back and very buoyant, you can pay people. But one of the things, you probably need to give them a password or change your password, give it to them. They will work on it. Then they will give it back to you and then they will change your password. But if you do at the minimum, some of these things I'm showing you, your LinkedIn is as good as what optimized. Um, time permitting, I may also quickly show you my LinkedIn page just to reinforce one of two things. So make a custom LinkedIn profile URL. I'll show you that. Um, I don't want to log in and out of this PowerPoint presentation. So after I run through this thing, I'll take off to my LinkedIn profile and run us through briefly. Your LinkedIn profile will be, you know, maybe LinkedIn.com, maybe for example, for, for example, like me, only a Madiosha. It's customized, it's my name. It's not, I've seen some people that LinkedIn is a number or something very random. Okay, you can also make sure you configure your LinkedIn privacy settings correctly. For example, on your LinkedIn privacy, okay, you may want to choose your open to work if you happen to work. You may also want to choose that you are visible only to maybe recruiters. You know, that's you, know, you may choose, for example, the kind of jobs you are searching for and pick maybe sectors or industries or job type, okay? All right. Now, this may look like a, how do I say this? May look like a given, but sadly, the reality shows, I've seen people, their LinkedIn profile, they don't have any picture at all. Personally, if you don't have a picture on your LinkedIn, I won't be motivated to continue the conversation with you, except is it for a very senior role, and is a role that is um, scarce or hard to fill. Now, apart from not having a picture on your LinkedIn profile, and now I find funny, it's not even having a picture, but the picture is not professional. You can see some people, you think that um, coming from the beach, and that kind of picture may be good for Instagram, but not LinkedIn. LinkedIn by default is a professional setting, except of course, maybe your job is entertainment. So maybe uh, your profession, you, are, you, you contest or like beauty pageants, then being in a bikini may absolutely be perfect as a LinkedIn profile. Again, you understand where, where I'm coming from, context matters. So I'm not saying that a bikini is bad in all contexts. But I'm saying, for example, maybe you want to do a proper job, say in a bank, investment firm, and bikini. You see, there's no correlation in that instance. All right. Um, so there are different sections on the LinkedIn profile. 
Some people, they leave many of these sections empty. You cannot afford to. You should have useful, relevant information there. Um, you, you should have a banner or a cover photo, okay? There is introduction. Some people just write one line, and that one line is generic or big to optimize it, okay? There is an about section on LinkedIn, use it. Again, I will show you practically my own LinkedIn page just to guide you not to copy and paste. My life is different from your life. Hopefully yours is even more interesting than mine. Okay, optimize, um, use the LinkedIn feature session. Optimize LinkedIn work experience session. So there's a session for work experience, use it well. Use the section, there's a section for about me, use it. There's get skill endorsement, use it. There's get recommendation. Now get people who have worked with you generally and can give useful recommendation about you. Then connect and engage. There are people you should follow. Okay, maybe people in your industry, people in your line of career, the leaders and the likes, follow them. There's even a summary there. You need to what? Follow them. Before I go to my LinkedIn page, why should you optimize your LinkedIn? There is a statistics that I saw and I found fascinating that there are 40 more times, there are 40 more times likely to be contacted by recruiters if your LinkedIn page is optimized, which gives you 40 times more job visibility. Okay. When people are searching randomly, generally, maybe for a role or a person, you are 18 times more visible in a search. Okay, so what I'm going to do now. I'll just quickly um, go to my web browser. Okay, so let me go to my LinkedIn page. Please confirm that you are seeing my LinkedIn page right now. I need one confirmation, either voice or chat. Yes, 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 we can yes, see it. it right. So let me just quickly browse through. Now, you can see my picture here, professional. You can see. Now, I was talking about banner. This is my, my banner. I hope you can see my cursor moving. You can see on my banner things like training and development, human resource, labor laws, administration, payroll, change in there. That's my banner. It's not a random thing. I'm talking about LinkedIn optimization. So if you are optimizing your LinkedIn, create a banner that represents what you do. Have a professional picture. If you need to go to a studio to take the picture, it's worth it or get a friend who has a very good camera. Some of you use iPhone 14 or 13, use it. Now look at this, this is my name. This is my job, current job role. You can see here, I have some, what will, will you call this now, like footnotes. Okay, I talk about HR, HR advice, HR careers, HR community. Now you can see me now, the last 40, 50 minutes, I've been talking about HR advice. I do this and it's reflecting here, okay? You can see now I, I did not click on open to because of my level you understand what i mean but i could have clicked this and enabled open to add job profile more you can see now look at me now i'm still an upcoming person on LinkedIn. i have 19,691 followers only okay see my connections now let's scroll down okay let's scroll down Look at my analytics, for example. You are seeing this because I'm showing you. If you go to my next day page, you won't see this. It's because I'm the author here. And that's why I'm giving you this back end view of my profile. I have 6,838 profile views. Okay. My posts, the posts I share in the last seven days, I have 47,865 post impressions. I appeared in 552 search. Okay, you can see, you follow me. Now, I told you that there's a session called future. Before I optimized my LinkedIn, the future one on my LinkedIn was blank. Meanwhile, I had information I could include in it. And that's sometimes something that you know amazes me. Some things we leave blank. We are leaving them blank, not because we don't have information, we are just not aware. So for example, you can see I have put some of the seminars I've done, some of the articles I have, you can see on my LinkedIn. You can see these are features. So you can see some of the webinars. So for example, after this session, I hope and I pray and I request only share the video with me recording 
I will upload it and I will add it to my future. So that if somebody wants to invite me for a talk tomorrow, they can easily see the talk I've given in the past and be able to judge whether I'll do a good job or an excellent job like I'm already doing. Activities, you can see, all right? So look at, this is about me. You can see what I wrote. See the about me session. I didn't just put a one liner. Even though I put like three or four paragraphs, they are meaningful paragraphs, not just anything random, relative to my career goals, aspirations, my capability. See my experience, I took time to really build it and fill it up. We can see the different places I've worked. Look at my education. I put it there. I know people, they will have a master's degree or a certificate online or something. They won't remember to upload it. You look at my licenses and certifications. You can see, I have over seven licenses and, and certifications. Look at it. I put everything there, one after the other. Are you, are, are you with me? So please, it's one thing to be able to um, achieve things, attain things. It's another thing to even look at it. Look at this now. Look at the recommendations I have received. You can see. On different people. See, I have 30 recommendations. I make it a point of duty anywhere I work, while I'm there or when I leave, I reach out to people. Now, this is where I work currently. This is my immediate managing director, group managing director. He has exited now. I asked for his recommendation when he left. This person has exited my organization when she left Alaska. When I was at Korea Plus, this is my MD. I asked for a recommendation. I, so you may ask from 60 people, and only 20 people will answer. When I was at Ikeja Electric, I worked with this, my brother, Ignatius Imako. You can see, this is it. So see, I interfaced with uh, NECA, Nigerian Employers Consultative Association. I asked him for my recommendation. My last HMO, I worked with Obinaya Abadji, pastor, who is also our church member. Okay. I asked him for a recommendation. All this I did after I left. Do you understand? So even if there are vendors you have served sincerely, genuinely, some of you instead of asking, uh, won't you do Christmas for me? And uh, won't you give me Christmas? No. When you have served me, you can say, please, do you mind giving me a recommendation on LinkedIn? These recommendations here can open more doors. You two will be doing Christmas for other people. Okay, you can see. Recommendation. Of course, as I'm giving uh, received recommendation, I've also given multiple. There's nobody who I've worked with that has asked me for a recommendation that, that I didn't uh, oblige. Of course, I will say the truth. I'm not going to lie and say you did what you didn't do. Again, we're talking about the um, LinkedIn optimization. Everybody has a recommendation space on their LinkedIn by default. The question is. Do you have recommendations? So, for example, if you don't have your recommendation, you won't have like a all star rating. So, the more empty spaces you have on LinkedIn, or when you fill it but not well filled, appropriately filled, it will impact on your what visibility. Look at this. There is a section called honors and awards. Some people will leave it blank. Even if you are first in primary school, it's for a part of it. Put it there. Part of it, let me make you laugh as a landlord. My brother read food technology in the University of Ibadan. You know, that is the only course in Nigeria where relatively you have a high percentage of ladies relative to electrical engineering, civil and the likes. My brother was the second best student in his class. However, the best student was what? Was a woman, a lady. I don't want to use girl. Guess what my brother put in his CV back then? best male graduating students. He didn't put second best. Did he lie? No, he was the best male student, but was not the best student. So I hope somebody's mind just so put. If he was the best graduating student, he will not say best male. He will have said best graduating. But because the best graduating was female, not done on him that. Of all the men, I mean the best, and I say best male students. So you can see some of the tiny things I've put here. 
You two have honors, you have awards, put it there. Organization, you can see, put it there, okay? So you can, so this is just the, the brief that I'm able to show us, okay? Um, as a result of time, I suspect that my time is up and maybe the moderators are enjoying this conversation, they are not remembering to track. So please, consciously check. I think I can end by saying, take your career to the next level. Like the Boy Scout will say, always be prepared. Be on the lookout for opportunities to learn and to grow. Above all, whatever your aunt's friends to do, okay? Do it well, do it well. And what will happen, you are higher. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Yemi Adioshu. We are so, so, so grateful. Thank you for your time. Thank you for energy, your resources. Thank you for sharing so much light and wisdom. We thank you for giving us part of your day. I mean, we didn't take, we did not take this for granted at all. Thank you for sharing so much value. I believe we've learned so, so, so much and some things you've taken for granted. Um, we are beginning to see the importance, right? This is really, really, really rich. Thank you so, so much. So it's high time for us to ask our questions, clarifications. I mean, whatever question it is that is bothering you is in terms of CV writing or your cover letter, your LinkedIn, your interviews and all of that. So you have the floor now to ask your question. So please going to open the floor for us. Okay, I will say we don't have questions or we need someone to start to the other group that will follow. Okay, so you can raise up your hand if you have questions and um, I will unmute you to ask your question. Any question, any clarification? Your past interview, is it how to negotiate salary? I mean, they can say you're just starting your career, you don't need money. How do you attend such questions? I mean, you can ask any question, like any question at all. Okay. You want us to frame your question for you? Ask now, you have the floor. You can also type in your questions. You can also um ask and you can also um connect with Mr. Amy on the following platforms that I is displaying right now. It's phone number, it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. His email address, website, and as well, LinkedIn. You can follow him on LinkedIn as well. Thank you so, so much. I will say we have questions for Mr. Yemi. It's okay. You can reach me later when you have the questions. It's okay. Okay, yes. Okay, so he's giving us that blank check. You can reach out to him if you have questions. Okay, yes. Ian Olua Ojo, you have a question. Please ask your question. Okay, um, good evening, everybody. And um, good evening, Mr. Yemi. Thank you so much for the um, session. It was very, very informative. So please, I want to ask a question. So if um, during an interview and they ask you for, um, like when they ask you, um, where do you see yourself in the next five years? And you're, you're a person where you're just trying to find your path in, uh, you're just trying to find your career path and um, you still don't know the, um, you, still don't, you still don't know the, um, you still don't know your career focus. So what is the best answer? What is the best answer to give them? Because I know that yes, they want, they want um, all, like they want to know um, all the things you're going to achieve and um, they want to, like they, they, they shall want to hear something promising. So but you that are still trying to find your, your career path and um, you still don't know what you, uh, what you are still going, what you're going to end up in because you are, you are still in the transition and transition phase and also what is the best answer to give them in um, when they ask that type of question okay thank you so much for that beautiful question 
intentionally I'm taking you back to a slide. So if I was supposed to use just one slide for the entire conversation, it will have been this slide. Now you can see the things I'm showing you. One of them is what? Context. One of them is interrelationship. Now, let me give you an example relative to this your question. Let me use a bad example. You know, you can tell them that in five years time, I'll be married and have two children. Would that not be true? Or could it not be true? Say, no, don't laugh. In five years time, don't you suspect you'll probably be married and have children. However, if you say that, what makes it awkward? Is it the truth? Yes. Is it something desirable? Yes. But what are we trying to hire you for? Not a wife hero, not a motherly hero. So it is out of context. I'm teaching you how to answer a question so that irrespective of the question, you must understand the framework. So the first question is, what job are you being interviewed for? Let us use the example we chose today. Similarly, what was the example, the job that we were trying to hire you for? Personal assistant. Now, if I'm the person, I can say something like, oh, in the next five years, I see myself transiting maybe from a personal assistant to an executive assistant. Or I see myself, even though I'm still a personal assistant, my incubates have so much confidence in me that I'm almost operating like chief operating officer. Because over the next five years, I will have earned his trust that he can delegate more and more things to me and I can handle them successfully. Make sure that that's your five years is an advancement on what they are offering you or the purpose why you are. So I've, I've had people say something like, why do you see yourself if I say no, I'll be sitting where you are sitting now. Did you come to the job to take their own job? Or you hear something like, I'll be the managing director. And the managing director is just 39. You want to retire me at 44? Just look for what's the echelon or the next level or next two levels on that thing. So maybe you are an entry level, for example, officer. You can say, oh, in the next five years, I see myself being a, a supervisor or assistant manager in this same line. Don't come and, you know, I know some of us have multiple dreams. Don't, for example, you're in an investment, you're doing interview in an investment bank. Don't tell them that you see yourself in the entertainment sector. What are you communicating? That's where alignment comes in. Do you, do you so it's like if you're a man and a lady is telling you something, you, your response is relative to the interest of the lady and your interest. So remember the interest of the organization. Remember your own interest. I'm sure all of us did all level mathematics. Remember set theory. You have two sets and then there's intersection. Where does your interest and the interest of the organization? So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you should lie. I'm not saying you should manufacture information. Otherwise, if you don't have interest in the organization, you will not have gone for the interview in the first place. Focus on them. Don't say something like uh, um, Victor Ademola will, 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 be, will be contesting for politics, except you went for interview at APC. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Don't say that I hope that uh, I'll, I'll be a senior pastor by then, except you went for interview at the Covenant Nation. Context matters. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you thank so you. much, Mr. Thank you, thank you so much. So we have a question um, here. Okay, do you okay. still have another question, Ian? Yes, I do. Okay, please, can you make it? Thank you. All right, so, um, so for um, salary negotiation, how, how, do, how do we go about that? Because, um, okay, so um, for, for someone that just completed, um, NYSC and maybe and where and where you served, they were they were paying you like um, thirty five thousand naira and your like for and um, for the next job your your desire is to earn more and let's say um, above hundred and when they ask you what you were earning in your previous um, employment and you tell them thirty five thousand naira and the gap you're asking for is quite is quite much how would you defend it because I know. 
I know they, they want to challenge you. So how would you defend it? And also, is it is it advisable to ask the um, HR some questions? Like I know at, at the end of every interview, they're, they're going to ask you if you have any question. So if it's advisable, what kind of questions can we ask back after okay. every interview? I, I will answer the two questions. Iano, can you permit me to, do I have your permission to yab you? Okay, you have not responded. Maybe you don't want me to yab you. But can I put it to you that you are not earning that 5,000 in NYC? How much was the federal government giving you, Iano? 33. <laughs> How much was the organization giving you? 35. 35 plus 33. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Do you see how we undersell ourselves? Yeah, that's true. And that's why I started. You know, we would think we don't, you were not earning 35,000, you were on 63. Now, maybe during the NYC self, you are still doing some small PP. I remember back then I served in Taraba. I got some teaching jobs, but I didn't do it. I gave them to my another friend who was in customs, but she lost children. I was teaching. So if you are doing some small side of you and you add everything, maybe it's even 100,000. Maybe you still had one daddy or uncle that was still gracious and still supporting you or big elder brother. Do you understand? However, even though that's on a lighter note, even though I'm very serious, you must know what you have. Don't short sell yourself at any point. Don't start from 33 when you should start from 68. Now, if you don't have any job at all, and the alternative is you are at home, you say, for this role, I desire to earn 150,000 naira. However, I know that this is a standard organization and you may have a range for this role. I'm open to consider what you would like to give me in case it's not up to 150. But let me also add, if your salary range is above the 150, forgive my naivety. Please, you can give me the 220 that is on your salary bag. Thank you. So that way, you have showed that uh, you are flexible upward and downward. Okay. Typically, for example, if you go to first bank mm -hmm. at entry level, it's not what you ask that they will give you. They already have a bank. Do you understand? If you go, if you want to work with federal government at level seven, or level eight, federal government will not even negotiate. She said that you are happy, just like I said, they didn't negotiate with you. They just told you, you know, so don't, don't worry. Now, with respect to your question on question, see, um, you know, I didn't have sufficient time. I actually had a slide on, on that. It's, it's, let me say this quickly. Rather than ask a foolish question, it's safe not to ask any question. I'll say that again. Rather than ask an a question that is um, out of out of context. It is better to say thank you so much. At this point, I don't have any question. If I have any question, I'll reach out later to this. However, asking a good question is better by far than not asking a question. You can see the progression I'm making. It's better to be silent than ask a foolish or stupid question. But it is better to ask a good question than not to ask. So how do you go about this? Which means that upfront, you should prepare to ask questions. It's not when you go to the panel, to the interview, or on the Zoom call, you now be saying, ah, what question can I ask you? Now, on the screen right now, I just randomly put some, some one or two questions. Now, I looked at your website. I noticed this and that. Can you tell me about it? About it? That's a good question. On a good day, the average organization today will have a website. If you take your time to go through, you will find something interesting that ah, maybe they're opening a new branch in Ghana, or they just launched a new product, or they just extended their production line. That would be interesting to say, oh, I looked at your website and noticed, I use the word this or that because I want it to be generic. Is what you notice, what you will notice in GT will be different from what you will notice in Facebook. What you notice now, they, you have used that question to say, I'm interested in your organization. I took the time to study about you and I even want to know more. Question two, which is not a bad question. 
what type of advancement opportunities are available in your organizations? It shows you are ambitious, you are interested in growth and in development. Question three, and I don't know why people don't like asking this question. When will I be able to start? It's a good question. Or don't you think so? I just want to know when I'll be resuming this job. That shows purpose, it shows intention. You know, women, women, let me use this example. When you really like a guy and the guy really likes you, and the guy says, my lady, I'd like to marry you. When would you like us to get married? What other commitment do you want more than that? When will I be able to start? This few points of mine, I hope I've been able to convince you that you have gotten the job. Any other question? Thank you so much, Mr. Amy. Thank you so, so much. I also feel like I'm at YPB because I'm just laughing and laughing. Okay, so we have a question here. Someone is asking that what we advise a newbie on LinkedIn about connection. And just a follow up to that, I have a question in terms of okay, so you have organizations that request for you to um um they ask you about your previous salary or for you to bring um evidence of your previous pay. I mean, consider that it's a confidential information. So what would be your approach to that? I mean, the, the company I left telling me that okay, this information about your pay and all of that is confidential. Other employees, other companies asking me to tell them about my past pay or give them something that's evidence what I was earning. So do you think what's your approach? What, what I would suggest that? is if it is confidential, respond to them that oh, I'll have love to share with you the evidence of my current pay. However, Part of my contractual obligation to my incumbent or former organization is not to disclose any part of the contract because it's bilateral. I would like you to know that if I join your organization, hopefully we agree on the terms and conditions. I also keep all your information confidential to you. Except they want you not to come and keep their own confidential. Will they go ahead to insist? So. You, you can negotiate with me without necessarily saying what I was earning before. But if you really like the job oh, and it's not confidential, there's really nothing why you can't share it. Let me give you an example. Some of us, when you are going to Canada, they will tell you to bring bank statements. You don't tell Canada that it is confidential. You will say, take my bank statements, you know. Um, okay, so question the, on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn. So you need to be um, intentional and deliberate. Everybody starts somewhere and starts small. So of course, it's a no-brainer. All your own friends, so to speak, you add them now, follow them, they follow you back. You know. But in addition to that, so let me use example. So let's assume that I'm a young pastor and I have a link deep page. I want to use an example we can relate to it. Can you mention the top 10 pastors in Nigeria today? In no particular order. I'm sure somehow Pastor Adeboye will enter there. True or false? Pastor or Bishop or Idepo will enter there. Should I not try and follow all those people, all these Oyakilo men, uh, Pastor Pojo Ibadi? Do, do you understand? So check your industry too. If you say you are in HR, for example, you can go go search and say top HR leaders in Nigeria. So if you're in HR, for example, there are HR thought leaders globally. Same will apply to any field of the endeavor. So even if you don't know them right now, just Google 20 um, aviation experts, uh, 20, um, what do you call it, uh, software developers, 20, and try to follow them. So that you are following the right people. You are, and one thing with, uh, what do you call it, technology, and LinkedIn, like other, even Facebook is, the, after you have followed certain type of people through the back end algorithm, it will now be suggesting that people who follow also follow people who so let me give you an example. You can say people who follow Bill Gates also follow Elon Musk. People who follow Elon Musk also follow Mark Zuckerberg. You can check their profile to see that it matches your interest, and then you continue to to be like that. It's not rocket science, honestly. You can do it. Thank you so much, Mr. Amy, for that question. Thank you for asking our questions. Uh, 
Any other question before we call it a day? Okay, thank you so, so much, Mr. Amy, for your time. Thank you for sharing so much value and insights. Really appreciate your time. And please let's endeavor to connect with Mr. Amy on the various platforms on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Follow him everywhere. Please follow him and let him know that, uh, let him know all the value as added to you. I mean, reach out to him on LinkedIn, let him know that yes, you all the things you've learned and all that. Thank you so, so much once again. And on this note, like to call it, I don't know if Coach Lizzie has anything to say. Oh, not, a, not at all. Thank you so much, Emilia. You've done an amazing day. It's been such a pleasure with you. Thank you for sharing knowledge with us. No doubt everybody had um, a great time. So please, let's continue the conversation. For those who would like to have CV reviews, I know that Miriam has announced it. If you like... Um, if you just let your leaders know, I know Victor is here, and your okay is here, let your leaders know, and we will put together a session to look at it critically. Thank you so much again, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, thank you very much, Coach Lizzie. Thank you, Mr. Daniel Shun. All right, have a great week, everyone. And um, on this note, we call it a day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.